let's take a look at the slave plugin. Once you insert the work slave, it automatically recognizes the amount of audio channels on the track and classifies their audio types. If the track is in mono, it's classified as a sound object. Sound objects require positional data for each period of time, so each object will have an azimuth, elevation, and distance parameters. If the track is in quad, it's classified as ambisonics. For ambisonics audio, the yaw and pitch parameters are available. For channel-based audio, we currently support stereo and 5.1. Let's now take a look at the options available for each audio type. The default for all audio types on the slave is interactive mode. Interactive 3D modeling is for when the auditory position of sound objects changes respective to the user's movement, while non-interactive is when the sound is fixed regardless of the user's movement. Let's listen to the difference between the two. These options are available for all mono, stereo, or ambisonics tracks. Stereo audio tracks such as music, which do not require positional data, should be on non-diegetic mode. For ambisonics, both ACN and FUMA are supported. You can choose the signal format in this window. What's important here is that for ambisonics, you need to change the default output from no output to stereo. This is when you insert the slave plugin onto a quad or 5.1 channel track. Once you've inserted the slave onto each audio track, insert the works master on the master track. The master window has multiple sections. The track list section manages the tracks. The two map view sections visualize your audio in a three-dimensional space. The video view section lets you overlay and edit each object with its sound source audio. In the track list section, tracks are listed in the order of object, ambisonics, and channel. From the two map view sections, you can change the stereophonic view to make sure you accurately place the sound in the three-dimensional space. Before we move on to the video view section, let's first load a video. The loaded video synchronizes with the Pro Tools timeline. It is highly recommended that you import a 480p video in order to minimize the processing load on your CPU. Below the video view section, there's a blue time display that lets you check the Pro Tools timeline and the video synchronized time. If you double click the time display window, you can change the time code. Let's take a look at each button here. The Sync View button is a toggle switch that lets you synchronize the Map View section with the Video View section. The Label button is used if you wish to display the name of the track on the screen. The Video and Grid can also be displayed with this button here. Please note that if you click on the colored circles in the Track List section, you can display their position in the Map View section and Video View sections either individually or by type. Depending on your viewing preference, you can switch between panoramic view and HMD view using the panoramic button. HMD view lets you visualize what you would see if you were wearing a head-mounted display. As you watch and listen, your audio is binaurally rendered and adjusted as your view positioning changes or your sound objects are moved. This is what we mean by our edit as you watch feature. In the next session, I'll work on a project in order to demonstrate how you can create content using works.